I find it very interesting that the music already kind of flowed in that that way. Yeah. Without kind of. Without being forced. Yeah. There was only like I said, there was only the one song that we needed to throw in, but everything else fit perfectly. But so so in hindsight, when when you wrote the music for for what ended up on the album, mm. was there a coherence when you wrote that? Was that all written in the same space of time or same mood in the, in, in the back of your head? Yeah, because it was all written within those couple of months as well. Right. Okay. You know, so. It all came together like as one. Hmm. And then, know. this might be di difficult to describe them, but in those couple of months in the studio, what what was the mood when you when you were writing? It was good. It was good. It was good generally. It was. A, I mean, I I personally loved it. It was about a twenty minute walk from my house. Okay. So every day I was getting out, going to going to work, you know. Mm -hmm. And then Danny would come in, and we just we'd have fun. It was good. It was a great place. Was it at the end of those two months or so that, that the album started to take shape or was it already, okay, now we think... It was especially, I think we might have had like about another five or six weeks after Danny had the idea mm. before we went on tour. Okay. And then by the time we went on tour, it was kind of like, okay, we were almost ready at that point. Mm. We've got to come to some things to finish off. But, yeah, like yeah. you say, because the, the optimist, the, the ending changed uh, because of that something kind of that thing. Yeah, so it. that happened on on the tour, mm -hmm. um, but I think all the other writing parts were all done. Okay. So, so what's it like? Because you you have then these new batch of songs, and then you go uh, perform them live. What what is that like? Is that anxious? Is that? Yeah, there's a certain. Especially because you're not finishing the album yet. You, 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 mean, you mean before it's out or after? Before it's out. Before it's out? Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's more like, well, like I said, it, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's a pretty selfish thing, really. It, it, the songs reveal themselves to you. Mm -hmm. They reveal whether they're, whether they're finished or not, because right. that's essentially what you're looking for. You know, it's not, it's not so much the reaction of the crowd, whether you think it, the song's good or not. Okay. It's just, you know whether it's good or not, and you know whether it's finished. We played a couple of songs on that tour, maybe at least one that was, that didn't make it to this record, you know. And um, that became of just evident. Okay. And it was, and the, the irony is it was going down well, <laughs> you know, but we chose not to do it. But that must be, a, well, you've never been a band who kind of caters to, to what people want. But exactly. But, but, but what we were, what we were making a record, we were making an album that's like a coherent, a coherent whole. Mm -hmm. And we know how to do that. We've always done that. So right. it's like, this one doesn't fit. Neither does that. They have to go. Like there was a couple of contenders for the first song. Mm -hmm. No, 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 we don't do them. And then, um, so then you, you make a, a slight adjustment with the order and, and then all of a sudden it's just there. And then, well, you talk about finishing certain songs, but the, the finishing the album then, because uh, I want to talk about the last track on the album, uh, Back to the Start. Mm. W was it early on that, that, that you knew that that would end, uh, finish the album, that, that that would kind of be the culmination of it? Yeah. Um, well, when Danny first played us the track list and the idea for it, he had a different song to, to close, okay. which is, which was also good and like, mm. would have worked. It's just that me and, he didn't know that me and John had already been working on this track of John's, you know, so, uh, it was one of them where we'd like, okay, that's that's good, but have a listen to this. We think this this is more appropriate, actually. And um, especially because um, we had the lyric okay. from A Fine Day to Exit in it already anyway, okay. which was, um, from there's like a hidden track on um, on the fine day to actually called in the doghouse and the chorus is and all I want is you but you don't know it's true and we thought that would fit perfectly into this and with this whole idea of this story mm -hmm. and um, we started on the beach and we just created this this scene for it mm -hmm. And, what did uh, you picture? What did you picture in that scene? In the scene? Yeah. That the, at this point, the, that the, the protagonist, the optimist, mm -hmm. is, he's already past the point of no return, but he's, 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 he's at a point where the worst has happened, mm. and he's now finding himself um, 
in a completely different decision mm -hmm. that he, he, he anticipated. It's not where he intended to, to be or to go, but uh, it's the right place for him to be. Mm -hmm. And that's the important thing. Well, because the, the way it sounded to me, at least, was uh, almost uh, yeah. euphoric in a way. Yeah. So, yeah. What was that? Am I right in saying that? It is euphoric. Okay. It's a euphoric ending to the album, you know. And, uh, it had to be. Why? It's too, you can't end it on a. It's too dark, or the, it's too. You know, we just couldn't do that. Hmm. And, and it would have been wrong anyway, okay. you know. It would have been. It, that would have been contrived, mm. you know. Okay. But it was so that the balance between the darker elements and the very personal elements, but then also the, the, the hopeful or the silver lining or... Well, yeah, there's... Yeah, it ends on that kind of euphoria, but it's... Uh, yeah, I, I, it's absolutely the right way to end it. Okay. It's absolutely... It, it could only have been that. Right. You know? What I find interesting then, that when you maybe listen to the songs again, or even even now that you're starting to perform them live, are you, is your memory connected to kind of when you wrote it, when you were in the happy It mood will or? always be. Oh, okay, so it's, it's not that did you think of the kind of no the because the, like the way we wrote this one and the way we can kind of work together with Danny and John, um, that will always stay with me. That will that will be like something I'll always remember. Okay. And that Danny will always remember, like especially Danny's mentioned that to me quite a few times. It's a really special moment in our lives, like. Mm. So, even years down the line, we'll always remember that, you know. And as Danny told you, why he thought it was such a productive, uh, enjoyable. Well, thing? it's yeah. I mean, it's it's they were like magic times, you know. Mm. But then, again, then the uh, the kind of. You it's lots of reasons, and, and it's lots of reasons, okay. you know. You get up every day and you have somewhere to go and it's really cool what you're doing mm -hmm. and you're hanging around with the best people in the world, your, 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 your brothers and mm -hmm. your best mates and you're doing something really good with them. Mm -hmm. Doesn't get much better than that, you know. So, so now with the thought of playing live then, um, has the album changed since, since it was kind of finished? Musically? Yeah. There might be some slight adjustments here or there, but not a lot, I don't think. I mean, some of them will be interpreted live in a different way, slightly. But it's, it's kind of done, you know. Well, because well, what you mentioned, there is a certain narrative to, uh, to it. So, yeah. so will that be difficult to convey honestly in a live setting? No, not at all. It'll, the idea is to have a more... Uh, it, it's a visual story, so we'll have something that's going to carry that, mm -hmm. as well as the songs. Okay. Because the, actually, the album is a visual one. Like the, the so Travis has, Travis has worked really, really hard on this. And Travis Smith, the artist, and the music itself is like a companion piece of this forty-page art book. Okay. You know, that goes on this whole journey. Okay. It's full colored journey like of this this guy okay. so it's told through that if you listen to the album and you look through it then you really start to get the picture right. of it um, and you can also come see us live and it'll be told live as well in that way mm. and if you listen to it on a stream like or on, on iTunes or whatever you'll get it you'll get mm. you'll get quite a lot of it but you won't get everything mm. you know it is a visual album like so it's meant to be kind of Absorbed visually as well as, and obviously with the, with the type of music that you've been making for years now, uh, almost it is very atmospheric and very uh, cinematic in a way. So, so have you thought about kind of doing a, a proper film? film oh score God, and? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's to us. That's just that's inevitable. Okay. That's going to happen. So, so what is it still depending on? Um, connections and okay. things like that. We've 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 already got material. We've already got music that okay. we want to do. You know. Okay. So, yeah, we can. The the thing about soundtracks are it's there's a the similar sort of dynamic process to creating an album that you an, an hour's worth of music that you're mm -hmm. meant to listen to from start to finish. That's got all the necessary peaks and troughs and right. different atmospheres and, you know, 
Um, so yeah, and we also we also work a lot with like kind of sort of hypnotic themes that sort of come back now and again and uh, refrains that repeat in a different way mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. We've always liked that stuff, so yeah, we could do it. So in this day and age, and, and the animation streaming services, and, and, and so with people, I, I assume not not listening to music from start to finish all the yeah. time anymore. So what, is it, was this a thing in the back of your mind? No, it's just the way we've always done things. But it's um, um, we recognize that you know what? It's people have the choice to listen to music right. in whatever way they want. You know, so um, we're always going to make artwork and visual records and like something with more to it than just like oh pick a track you know right. stream it you know that kind of thing um so that's just the way we do things so it yeah. works for us final question then what is uh one of your favorite soundtracks or something that that inspires you in in, in kind of the, the atmospheric elements of music Funnily enough, actually, there's a record that Tony Dugan worked on, our, okay. our producer for this record, um, the soundtrack for The Fountain. And you know what? I haven't even seen the film. I, I feel like I really should, I really should watch the film. But um, I love the soundtrack. That I've listened to the soundtrack like dozens and dozens of times, and I really like it. But it, it's uh, time to watch the movie, probably. Okay. Yeah, Tony Dugan uh, worked on that with uh, Mogwai Kronos Quartet, working with Clint Mansell's Clint, score. Yeah. So. It's really top notch, like. All right, Vincent. Thank you very much for your time. Cheers. <laughs>